the proposal illustrates how Russia, having helped turn the tide of the war in favor of President Bashar al-Assad, is now pressing Washington and others to aid the reconstruction of areas under his control. Such an effort would likely further cement Assad's hold on power. The proposal argues that the Syrian regime lacks the equipment, fuel, other material, and funding needed to rebuild the country in order to accept refugee returns, according to the memo, which specified that the proposal related to Syrian government-held areas of the country. The United States in 2011 adopted a policy that Assad must leave power but then watched as his forces, backed by Iran and then Russia, clawed back territory and secure Assad's position. The United States has drawn a line on reconstruction assistance, saying it should be tied to a process that includes elections and a political transition in Syria. It blames Assad for Syria's devastation. Dunford's office declined comment on communications with Gerasimov. The Kremlin and Russia's defense ministry did not immediately respond to a request for comment. The Syria conflict has killed an estimated half a million people, driven some 5.6 million people out of the country and displaced around 6.6 million within it. Most of those who have fled are from the Sunni Muslim majority, and it is unclear whether Assad's Allah-dominated government will allow all to return freely or whether they would want to. Sunnis made up the bulk of the armed opposition to Assad. The United States will only support refugee returns when they are safe, voluntary and dignified, said the memo which is specifically about the Russian plan for Syria. Rebuilding Syria will also be a massive effort, costing at least $250 billion, according one UN estimate. Some U.S. officials believe Syria's dependence on the international community for reconstruction, along with the presence of U.S. and forces in part of Syria, gives Washington leverage as diplomats push for a negotiated end to the war. Military channel The Exchange offered a rare glimpse into the military communications channel between Moscow and Washington, one that Dunford himself has fiercely sought to keep private. Dunford, who speaks periodically with Gerasimov, has stressed that the two militaries need to be able to have candid, private communications to avoid misunderstandings that could lead to armed confrontation. But it was unclear how reconstruction and refugees fit into military to military communications. Gerasimov's letter suggests that Channel is also being used by Moscow to broach non-military matters. President Donald Trump and Russian President Vladimir Putin discussed Syria, and the issue of refugees, at their July 16 summit in Helsinki. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said the talks focused on how we might get the refugees back. But U.S. Defense Secretary Jim Mattis said last week no policy changes came out of the summit. The U.S. government memo explicitly said the Russian proposal was not an outcome of the Trump-Putin talks, but cautioned that Russian officials were trying to present it differently. The Russian cover letter for the proposal sent to Dunford recommended the United States, Russia and Jordan repurpose a hub designed to monitor a 2017 ceasefire agreement to form a joint committee to implement the reconstruction and refugee return plan, the memo said. Jordan is hosting more than 650,000 Syrian refugees. The Russian letter also suggests that the United States and Russia form a joint group to finance infrastructure renovation in Syria, the U.S. memo says.